Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our God is a good God. He's a faithful God. He's a creator of heaven and earth. He's the only true God. He's mighty. He's awesome. I thank God for the privilege of sharing with us today. And I spent time with God on today's service. And it's mainly a teaching mantra. So let's go to work. I can assure you that please listen to today's message. It will help you for life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It will help you for life. I don't want to say much about me and all that. I just want to teach the word this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The title of the message is this, The Power of the Tongue. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have a good marriage, it's because of your tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nobody takes your husband from you. Nobody takes your wife from you. You are the one that gives it up. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Help me, oh Lord. This year will be 30 years of being married. Amen. I've never, Amen. never, 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 never hit my wife. I've never said a bad word or curse her. I have never eaten outside of my home because I'm annoyed. I have never stayed away from home for a night because I'm hungry with my family. We've had the same account, joint account, for 30 years. Amen. She's there. I said to you before I got married. Hallelujah. That whoever I marry, hallelujah, I am having a good marriage. I said a lot of things are in the world. I can handle a lot of things. But marriage, wahala. Marriage, trouble, I cannot handle. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Put that in your heart this morning. Especially the young ones. You can have a good marriage. You are a Christian. You belong to God. You are a child of God. So what do you have? A good car. And a good house. Hallelujah. The Bible is clear about it. If you don't have a good home, if you don't have a good marriage, you shouldn't even preach the gospel. It's clear. It's that serious. You are not from maybe from here to Timbuktu, but if you don't have a good marriage, no. That's the one vote that is most important. Everybody else will go away. But the only person that is with you, night and day, that really knows you, oh, please have a good marriage. And a good marriage is anchored in your tongue. Now I'm getting away from my message. The very next scripture after death and life are in the power of the tongue is that he who finds a wife has found a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. It's not a coincidence. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell people, you tell us, come and celebrate with me. I found a good wife. Nobody could stop you from marrying her. Nobody could stop you. Hallelujah. Nobody. She was the best. Praise God. Seven years down the line, then she's this, she's that, she's that, she's that. I said, what kind of anointing do you have that turns a wonderful woman or lady into a terrible woman after she's been with you for 10 years? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You want to have a good marriage? It's in your tongue. Period. Period. Especially men. Especially the husbands. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <laughs> help me, O oh Lord. I preach, I'm quite a strong preacher. <coughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's okay. It's not nice, but it's okay. <coughs> if the woman says it's going, but it's tough for you to say you are the one living, abandoning your position, your number one assignment before God and man. You called everybody together and said, this is what is happening. I am taking this woman forever. Hallelujah. You fail in that, you have failed in everything. Sorry. It's the word of God. So have a good marriage. And it's dependent purely on your tongue. You can change it now. By saying, a good marriage is my portion in Jesus' name. Ah, you've said it, you've said it meant to me. I'm asking you to say it. A good marriage is my portion. In Amen. How did I, Lord have mercy. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. 
although he told me, he said I should talk about, I should mention that marriage, especially for those who are young, who are just about getting into it. You can have a good marriage. A lot of things you may not be able to control, but that one you can control. Hallelujah. That one you can control. And it's the power of the tongue. So power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, verse 21. You see, it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. The Bible is wonderful. It starts off by saying death. It didn't say just life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of life. Yeah, that's it. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it. For death or life. Hmm. The first version of the Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it and indulge in it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words. Death and life are in the power of your tongue, not your neighbor's tongue. Hallelujah. Amen. Your own tongue. Death and life are in the power of your own tongue, not your neighbor's tongue. And you would reap, you would harvest the consequences of your utterance. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> um, you know, life assurance is, I said, you don't want to talk about stories, but okay, life assurance is, but they say, okay, if you die, they'll pay this. I say, yes, I love my wife. If I die, yes, let her get a lot of money. Then they say, but if you die before 70, she, you, uh, it is not, it's void. I say, forget it. I say, even the devil knows I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I am not going anywhere before 70. So don't waste your, I mean, that one doesn't apply. Now, I'm not saying you, don't, you have to have insurance. You have to have Life assurance, you have to have all of them. But you must know in whom you believe. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That, okay, fine, this one, okay, you can only get it to the person that dies before 70, oh dear. So I'm paying the money, but well, this one is not going to apply to me. Hallelujah. Yeah. I decree today that for everyone here today, you will see this decade through. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. You will see this decade through in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says the angels of God hearken not to the voice of his word. You will go through this decade. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you will bear the consequences of your words. The EXB version of the Bible says, What you say can mean, uh, what you say can mean in the power of the tongue, life or death. Those who speak with care, that's the key word, care. Those who speak with care, love it, and will be rewarded. Hallelujah. Amen. If you speak with care, you will be rewarded. The Bible says, in the, it says, says a perfect, a many one who can control his tongue is a perfect man. He's a perfect person. The TLB version of the Bible says, those who love to talk will suffer the consequences. I say, hey, God help me. Preachers love to talk. Then it says something serious. It says, men have died for saying the wrong things. There it means men and women and children. But in particular, men, strong, hefty men, guys, have died for saying the wrong thing. So be careful with what you say. If you don't want it, don't say it. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't want it, don't say it. How did you get saved? You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth. That's how, that's how serious utterances and confession. You couldn't even get saved by just, mm, I believe in my heart. No, no. You had to say it. So the greatest miracle on earth, salvation happens by you believing in your heart and you confessing it. How much would anything else? Disease cannot take you out except you allow it. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm a doctor, so I understand. I understand the family, I understand diseases. Except you allow it. Nothing can take you out except you agree to it. Take you out of this world except you agree to it. The word of God is clear. In the Psalms, it says 70 to 80. 80 by reason of strength. But in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, it says 120 years is what God has allocated to man. So our anchor scripture I want us to look at is Mark chapter 4. From verse 35 to 41. 
Here is an experience of the Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples <coughs> and a storm. Mark chapter 4 from verse 35 to 41. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Of the, lake. the instructions were clear. Let us go over to the other side. This is the Son of God speaking to his disciples. This is God, the Son of God. The Son of God is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, let's go over to the other side. Then let's read on. The Bible says, And leaving the trunk, they took him with them, just as he was in the boat in which he was sitting. And when and other boats were with him, okay, and a furious storm of wind, of hurricane proportions arose, and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. You see, the devil is not well. I always say the devil is not well. He has a major problem. He says, it's not well. He wants to kill the Son of God. The very one who created him. I mean, you know there's something really wrong there. So don't be worried. Oh, the devil will attack you. Uh -huh. why, you. Why will he not attack you? Why can he not attack you? He attacked God. <laughs> He's my father. The devil attacked God. So don't be surprised if he attacks you, a child of God. But God is an infinitely good God. He's giving you the capacity to rule and walk in dominion over the devil. Amen. So let's go on. The next thing is that an inferior storm of wind or the proportions arose and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it already became, it already was getting filled. But he himself was at the stern of the boat asleep on the leather cushion and they awoke him and said to him, that's okay to wake Jesus up in a storm. That's what you should do. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell people in an emergency, don't call me. Call Jesus. Amen. Amen. Don't call me. Hmm. The person you should call is Jesus. He's always online. Amen. Heaven is always open. 24 by 4, uh, 24 by 7 all the time. In a real emergency, you don't even have anything to say more than Jesus. In a real emergency, a real one, all you will be able to say is Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can still call your friend, call your pastor, call your neighbor, call your... Praise God. Amen. So call him. But when you call him, what you say is important. Amen. They called him. They said, <laughs> King, James is, King James said, Master, carest not doubt that we perish. Ah, ah. It's like going to God and say, God, don't you care that you are perishing? It's amazing. They had already settled the fact that they are going to die. They are concerned was that Jesus was not concerned. They didn't call him to say, address this situation. They didn't call him to say, stop this situation, master, which would have been all right. But they had already agreed that they were going to perish. And God help us that we don't do that also. You've already agreed with the doctor. They said this and this and that. Yes, the doctor is now Alpha and Omega. This is exactly what they said. You carry it before. The, the, you went to see your GP. He said, Oh, borderline hypertension. You didn't hear the borderline. Hypertension is what you hear. You tell your wife, you tell your children, you tell your neighbors, you tell everybody <laughs> that you have hypertension. Even the little kids. You say, don't shout, don't shout, don't shout, don't shout. <laughs> Mommy has hypertension. Ah! And it was just borderline. Perchance, you may, maybe the doctor even said, please come back in two weeks. We'll settle down, we'll see it and be sure. No, no, no. You have already received it. You have already accepted it. Then you go to God, you say, ah, Hey, appetition, this appetition, I don't want you to kill. Ah! No. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Even if the facts are there. Yeah. Understand the facts. Of course, you talk correctly with the doctor, you understand, or the, whoever you go to. You, say to go, you go to your GP and say, you are not sick, he will send you out. So exactly what is wrong, tell them, let them do their own thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. But when you get those results, then you go to God. Based on his word. Yeah. And then you start fighting. It's a fight of faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You don't agree with what they have said and the consequence of what they have said and then begin to cry out to God. That's what it is. They had already said to the fact that they were perishing. They were just concerned. He was not concerned that they were perishing. Hallelujah. Yeah. And they had the Son of God in with them. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's not enough to have the purpose of God. It's not enough to just have his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. But your words are powerful. 
Okay. Master, do you not care that we are perishing? Oh, oh. And he arose. Thank God for the Lord Jesus. Oh, I love him. I love him. He just woke up. The Bible says he rebuked the storm. That's tremendous power. That's what he expects of you. Young or old. When life situations come against you, you rebuke it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, you know, I said, I have a very good marriage. I have an exceptionally good marriage. My marriage is wonderful. Look, it's so good. My 24-year-old accountant's son told me. No, no, sorry, I repent. Told my wife. He's been here before. He said, I want my marriage to be just like yours and dad. That's how good the marriage is. My wife said, don't worry. It will be better. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I can tell you, we've gone through major storms. When I say major storms, ones that I will tell you, you quickly go to the toilet and come back. Major storms in this life. Major storms. Hallelujah. But it has not touched me. It can't touch my relationship with God, and it can't touch my marriage. Forget it. Hallelujah. No, I know in whom I believe. And my utterance is powerful. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm skilled in this. You take dominion. The key to taking dominion is the power of the tongue. What you say. What you say about your life. You want to be a pilot. You want to be an astronaut. It's up to you. What you say. You want to be the best in what God has called you to do. It's up to you. What you say. Now, I'm not saying that you say just once alone. No, 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 no. You have to settle down with it. With the word of God. I keep saying it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Until you are satisfied and you are full with the consequences of your utterance. So, um, and he arose and rebuked the wind. That's what he expects of us in life. To walk in power. When life situations ask you who you are in God, you answer, I'm a child of God, I'm a daughter of God, I'm a son of God. Greater I see that is me than he that is world. And you deal with the situation. So, he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush, now be still muscled. And the wind ceased and sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there was immediately a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. And he said to them, why are you so timid and fearful? How is it that you have no faith, no family relying trust? He was so disappointed with his disciples that you should have handled the situation. And that's how life is right now for believers also. God wants you to handle every situation that comes your way. Hallelujah. He's giving you enough, he's put enough in you to let you make the devil regret coming across your way. In every situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. So he was not very happy with them. But look at verse 41. And they were filled with great awe and feared exceedingly and said to one another, who then is this? <laughs> this is the master. This is, who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. These guys had degrees in fear. They had a BSc in fear in relation to storms. They had a master's working on their PhD in fear in relation to their master. They were afraid of everything. When their master was asleep, they were afraid. When he was awake, they were afraid. Fear, fear, fear. The exact opposite of faith, faith, faith. Hallelujah. Amen. A situation in which they should have attended to ruthlessly. They got afraid. Now, let me give us about seven things that relate to the tongue. The first one is that the tongue is powerful. The tongue is powerful. Job 22, verse 28. You shall also decree, decide and decree a thing, 
and it shall be established for you. And the lights of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. So you decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. You will have to decide on what you want. And you will have to decree it. Hallelujah. In your year of taking dominion, not just this year and forever, you will have to decide what you want and you will have to decree it. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. Ecclesiastes chapter 80. Where the word of a king is, there is power. You will have to de decree. And then it will be established unto you. So when you now decree, when you make the pronouncement, it's established unto you. And you now have that harvest which, of what you have said. The tongue is powerful. Another scripture will be Joshua 10, 12. Hmm. I'll read 12 to verse 14. Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 says, And Joshua spoke to the Lord on the day when the Lord gave the Amorites over to the Israelites. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, be silent and stay and stand still. You can't talk to your two-year-old to be silent and stand still. Here was someone talking to the son. The son. Thank God we're all educated. The son, that son, that thing called the son is bigger than this earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Bigger than it. That's the goodness of God. The generator to keep us fine is bigger than where we live. That's God. We have more energy from it than we can ever require. That's God. It's a God that, is, that lavishes us with his goodness. Joshua spoke to the son and asked it to stand still. Hallelujah. Amen. To the son. It's verse 13. And the son stood still. And the moon stayed. Until the nation took vengeance upon their enemies. Is it not written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and did not hasten to go down for a whole day. I love verse 14. And there was no day like it before or since when the Lord heeded the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. Hallelujah. And God is not a respecter of persons. Hallelujah. He is not a respecter of persons. If you will walk with him, if your heart is right with him, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord go through and through the whole earth to show himself strong and mighty on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. Hallelujah. There's nothing he cannot do for you. There's nothing he doesn't have, there's nothing he doesn't have the power to do. Jeremiah says, how Lord God you made the heavens and the earth. Is there anything too difficult for you to do? Nothing. He is God, almighty. The Bible says there was no day like it when God heeded the voice of a man. That's stopping the sun. The sun. Hallelujah. He's a good God. So the tongue is powerful. You see that? In, next one is Proverbs 15, chapter 4. And Proverbs chapter 15, verse 4. A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. Your tongue has healing power. Use it on yourself. Praise God. Your tongue has healing power. Use it on yourself. Praise God. Ah, I don't want to use... Okay, uh, maybe the examples will help. Someone, I was talking with someone and said, and the person said, ha, ah, uncle, I mean, not, you don't know the person, so the person is not here. So it's, I've said, a given part of it was a relation. I said, uncle, I'm, I'm, I need a job. I said, hey, what do you say now? Job? Ah, come, 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 come. So I said, giving scriptures. I said, go through these 50 scriptures. Spend one night every day on it, five days a week. And within the next six months, you would, you would, I'm sure you get a job. Oh, I said, no, no. Within the next four months. 
no, 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 listen, let me give you the scriptures. And I, she, she stood beside me. She's my cousin, and I was giving her the scriptures like that. Within 30 minutes, I gave her 50 scriptures. I said, within two months. She's working with the NHS now. Amen. And this is where I'm going. If you spend enough time with the word of God, you will have all of your heart's desire. Amen. If it's not happening, happening, if it has not happening, happened, it's because you have not yet spent enough time with that word. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Larry and sister, I've been me very well. I'm preaching for five minutes today. God help me. I normally pray for two hours. I don't have time. This is our life. You didn't live a spare life at all. You brought your own very life to church. Praise God. I'm not playing games. I have to give an account to God. Hallelujah. Your tongue has healing power. (coughs) Get healing scriptures. You say we shouldn't prescribe. I'm a doctor. We prescribe. Amen. But I'm a pastor. Amen. Amen. So I'm used to prescribing. Amen. When you say something is wrong with you, I tell you, use this, do this, do this, do this. Amen. Mm-hmm. And especially surgeons, they're not very patient. God is helping me a lot. Oh, God has helped me to be patient. So, you seek, get healing scriptures. Spend one hour every day in them. Five days a week. Leave Saturday and Sunday. Come to church, okay? Hallelujah. And six months, see what you, what you get. I'll give you a good example. Joel Osteen, Dodie Osteen, Joel Osteen's mother, Dodie Osteen. I mean, I'm sure you, you know Joel Osteen has a big church in America. The mother, about 40 years ago, she had sarcoma. That's a terrible cancer. And she was given four weeks to, to live. That she would die in four weeks. The son, the surgeon, started crying. Because we know what, this is, this is the end. This is terrible. And she and her husband, John Austin, then went on the floor and prayed. And she got out her scriptures, healing scriptures. She's it's still online till today. She's still doing to today. She's 85 or 86 now. I've said she's not going anywhere until she stops doing the scriptures. From 40, at the age of 40, they said she was going to die in four weeks. She's over 80 now ministering healing to people in the, the church. That's Dodie Austin. She said even if she's going to the airport at 4 a.m., she will take a one-hour healing scriptures first thing in the morning. That's my wife. My wife had a PhD at 25. I give God the glory. Hot. Between February last year and November last year that she started at the Bank of England when she, had, when she was at home, the first two hours when my wife wakes up is healing scriptures on her mouth. Healing scriptures like that for two solid hours. Hallelujah. Amen. No husband. Amen. Amen. T- t- first two hours. Then she, the next one hour, <laughs> protection. Then the next two hours, prosperity. Documented from February to November. Of course, by November 25th, she started working with the Bank of England. Amen. The word of God never fails. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And of course, of course, she went to the doctors and they did test, they said on a ratio of one, the number the one to 100, if you have over 15, then you can't go to work. My wife had zero. There was no reason <laughs> why she could not return to work. Purely based on the word of God. The word of God works. It works for those who work it. Hallelujah. But you will have to be strong. You will have to be determined that you are going to stay with the word of God. Two hours, 45 minutes, one hour on Sunday, out of 168 hours, it's not, it's not enough. I almost said it's nothing. It's not enough. How, many, how much hours do you spend to taking care of the physical body? The word of God is word to the spirit man. The Bible says the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Praise God. The stronger you are in your inner man, the more you are able to handle life situations. Unbelievers have it easy. They can take everything that comes to them. But a believer does not. It's the fight of faith. You have in you what it takes to change life situations. So you can't just accept everything that comes. No. 
Now, if you get to heaven, God will not say you can't come in because you allow sickness or disease or poverty or something to take you out. Oh, heaven will take you in. A lot of people are going in like that prematurely. But you would have allowed the devil to steal destiny and purpose from you. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And what changes that is the word of God. It's the word of God. You can't sit down with the word of God on your mouth. Scriptures, the word of God, for one hour or two hours a day, five days a week, and not see a radical change in that aspect of life that you are majoring on. Whether it's marriage, healing, prosperity, whatever it is, there has to be a change. The Bible says the angels hacking on to the voice of his word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God says himself, God is a perfect example. He said, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it must accomplish that for which it is sent. Amen. And prosper in that which it is sent to. Hallelujah. Amen. So, the word of, so the, your tongue is powerful. So that was on healing power. You're sick, get scriptures. One hour a day at least. One hour a day. Yeah, five days a week. Just five hours. If you, can, if you don't want to do it, then you're not sick enough. What did the pastor say? I won't repeat it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. That's prescription. Get the word of God. Ah, the tongues of Proverbs 10:20. The tongues of those who are upright and in right standing with God are as choice silver. The minds of those who are wicked and out of harmony with God are of little value. <laughs> choice silver is precious. Hallelujah. It has great value. Your tongue has great value. Use it. Praise God. Use it greatly. The next point is this. The tongue is a key to you to prosper. You want to prosper? Get the word of God. Put it in your mouth. Joshua 1.8. Powerful scripture. Joshua 1.8 says, This book of the law will not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night. That you may observe to do what is written in it. And then you will make your way prosperous and have good success. Mouth, let not depart from your tongue. Meditate on it. Think about it all the time. May observe. You have to observe. You have to do it. And who will make your way prosperous? Is you. Not God. You will make your way prosperous because you have spent time to fellowship and be in communion with the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So your prosperity is dependent on you. Hallelujah. Now, depending on what you want, the time is the demand you have to put on yourself in relation to fellowshipping with that word. Oh, you'll get the best husband. Ah, hallelujah. Amen. I don't like it when people are single and they say, I say come, come, let, let me pray for you. 7.5 billion people on the surface of the earth. Ah, ah, half of them males, half of them females. I pray to God they know which one they are. Amen. You can't get a good wife. You can't get a good wife. You can't get a good husband. Hallelujah. <coughs> I once remember I was preaching in seven and said, even if your husband is in Australia, God will bring him. Within a year, I was on my way to Australia. It's far. 23 hours in the air to go and marry a member that was sitting in that church that day. Amen. Within one year, I had to go to Australia to go and marry them. I was just saying it. Even if your husband is in Australia. Yes, he was in Australia and I went to Australia to join them together. Praise God. Second Corinthians 4.13, where on the word of God is a key to your prosperity. It says, yet we having the same spirit of faith, as it is written, I have believed, therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. 
If you believe, you will speak. Hallelujah. The Bible also says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you are going to speak has to have been put in there. Praise God. So a major key to your prospering is what you have put in your heart and what comes out. Because then the Holy Spirit will gather it. The angels will work on it to ensure your prosperity. And then Isaiah 55, 11, which I've already quoted today. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. This is taking an example from God himself. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect. But it will accomplish that which I please and purpose. And it will prosper in the thing which I have sent it. Mark, next one is Mark eleven twenty three. Well known scripture. Well known, very well known. It's important. Truly I say to you, whosoever will say, it's a blank check. But it's not saying once most of the time. Hallelujah. The devil is stubborn. He's been around for quite some time. Knows a few tricks. So you have to, he will check you out. Does he really, or does she really know what she's saying? Does she really want it? You'll have to take your stand. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. On the word of God. Amen. Until you see your desired results. Harvest. So it says, truly I tell you, whosoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. I mean, that's major. And does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place. It will be done for him. So if you believe in your heart and you say it, you will have it. Believe in your heart and say it. A man of God once said, the saying there is three times, and the believing is once. It is in the saying that we have to major in. That I'm blessed. The word of God says it. You have to say it that you are blessed. You are blessed in the city and blessed in the field. You are blessed going out and blessed coming in. Hallelujah. You are always at the top and never at the bottom. The next point I would give is the tongue is prophetic. I remember I said it, that one of the strongest messages you can hear is a message that was given on the 5th of January this year by Pastor May, year of taking your dominion. In that message, she said the tongue is powerful. She said it. Hallelujah. Very powerful. The tongue is prophetic. That's how you prophesy your greatness. That's how you prophesy goodness to yourself. And I said it, I've said it, the strongest person that can speak over you is the prophet of the house. Hallelujah. It's so strong. The Bible says, believe your Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. That's just the way God has set his structures. That's just the way he has set up his organization. Everybody today is blessed from whom? The father, the friend, the father of faith, the friend of God, Father Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. Get connected to him either physically as a Jew or spiritually as a spiritual Jew. Hallelujah. And the blessings are there. That's just the way God has ordained it. Hallelujah. Yeah. I remember one king touched his wife. The Bible says God shut the womb of all of them in the nation. Just because of one lady. And then God went to the king at night and said, you are a dead man. Hey! The king said, well, I have not done. What have I done? He said, because of the one you are saying. He said, but he said he was his sister. God said, well, that's how God fights for his own. Hallelujah. And God takes care of his prophets. And you are his prophet. You are his prophet that definitely over your life. Hallelujah. You are a prophet definitely over your household, over your family. Praise God. Amen. I like this scripture. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. I know I'm moving a bit fast. But it's okay. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. It says, and I'll read. And the elders of the Jews built and prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet. Can you see? They built and prospered through the prophesying of the prophet. And Zechariah son of Edo. And they finished their building as commanded by God by the God of Israel, and decreed by Cyrus. So yes, God commanded. Yes, the decree was there. But the prophet had to be prophesying, and then they could build. Hallelujah. 
So as the prophet of the house is speaking over your lives, you, you, are, you have a strong covering and you are able to build up. Build the things God has ordained for your life. So that's very important. Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. And then of course, 1 Peter 4, 11 says, whoever speaks, 1 Peter 4, 11 says, whoever speaks, let him do it as one who utters orac as oracles of God. Whoever renders service, let him do it as with the strength which God furnishes abundantly. So that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ the Messiah. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Through the endless of ages, amen, so be it. So, the tongue is prophetic. Speak over your life. Speak over your household. Speak concerning your workplace. Speak concerning your nation. Hallelujah. Don't join them and say, yes, this virus, this China virus or Peckham virus or whatever virus it is, is coming to your house. No! <laughs> Hallelujah. How can something arrest in China and be burdening you here? Hallelujah. Amen. Let it stay there. <laughs> Let them pray there. Hallelujah. <laughs> God help us. Amen. Come against fear in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember what Peter said. She, she's not taking flu from. She doesn't. Flu is not a problem. She says she's definitely not taking flu from a chicken. You know, everything. No, Hallelujah. So don't call it. Don't take what is not yours. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. The next one emphasizes that the tongue is our protection. The tongue is for our protection. The tongue is for our protection. Psalm 91, as powerful as this is, I'm sure we all of us know it. He will dress the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, that's the most important part of that scripture. You have to say it. I will say of the Lord, verse 2, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I lean and rely. In him I confidently trust. King James Version of the Bible says, he will dwell in the secret place of Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord. It goes on there. A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand. But it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of the. How can you take Psalm 91 and take any kind of virus and say both of them? Which one is superior? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you hear it at night, because you see, the devil is a liar. Look at the amount of. The, the, it's been pumped heavily out. How should I go? <sighs> My time. Ebola virus. Yeah. About four or five years ago, was rampaging and going like that. It was terrible. Terrible. This is small. terrible. And there was a conference. And God took two of his servants and said they should rebuke it. And they went out. And they rebuked. In that conference, I knew it. And that was the end of it. Hallelujah. So today, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, Amen. we cause the onslaught of coronavirus in Jesus' name. I command it to cease in the name of Amen. Jesus. In particular, around the shores of this nation. Amen. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the count goes down in Jesus' name. Amen. A stop. Right now, I mandate it in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I command a stop right now Amen. in the name of Jesus, Amen. the Son of the God. I decree it and it's established. Amen. One in this UK, Amen. two in the USA, Amen. three in Nigeria. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the God, Amen. I command a stop in Jesus' name and it will not touch Israel. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a great God. Amen. A stop. So the tongue is for your protection. <laughs> the tongue is so much for your protection. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, But no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, that shall prove to be in the wrong. That means other people's tongue, you have to stand up and say something. If you, I mean, if you ever go to court, you can't just say, you'll be in jail. <laughs> Hallelujah. They say this, they say, you have to defend yourself. You have to get a lot to defend you. You have to get other tongues to help you. You can't just go to court and say, hmm. <laughs> I know I didn't do anything wrong. No, 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 no. You didn't do anything wrong. You have to state your case. Yeah. So every time that's up against you, you have to condemn. Yeah. 
the best place to do it is in the court. You have to say something. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Except when God says, okay, don't worry. I'll fight for you. Just be quiet in this case. And a powerful scripture when it comes to protection. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, we all know it. Whatever you bind on that will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on that will be loosed in heaven. Yes. You have to say it. You have to bind it. Salvation is available for all. But you have to take it. You have to do something about it. The greatest miracle on earth, you have to receive it. There's no other miracle greater than salvation. But you have to do something about it. How about anything else? Anything else. If salvation, you have to receive it. You have to confess and believe in your heart. Praise God. The same thing applies for everything else. Hallelujah. So the tongue is for your protection. I mean, it's for your protection. Bind the devil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing. Christians are wonderful. Believers are powerful. I like this joke. You can't call believers. I can't tell you now that we want to fast and pray that the devil will go to hell. You won't agree. You know that the devil is going to hell. Every believer knows that the devil is going to the lake of fire and brimstone. They will fight over it. They know that the devil is destiny. He's going to the lake of fire. They will fight over you. Fight over it with you. But tell them they will prosper. They say, eh? Tell them that they are healed. They say, eh? Tell them they can have a good mind. They say, eh? And they know the devil is going to the lake of fire and brimstone based on the word of God. Is that same word that relates to everything else? Hallelujah. It's that same word. But the devil has been so active that you are fully persuaded that this one, I don't need to fast about it. He's going to lake of fire, bread. So <laughs> that this devil is going to hell. He's going to lake of fire. You are persuaded about it. The same way you have to be persuaded about every word of God. A thousand promises in that word. That's what holds this universe clearly in place. The word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. The next one is the tongue is for praising God. This we know very well. How many more minutes do I have? Please, let the count down. <laughs> so I can know. I think, please. There should be a countdown or something. Just flash it so I know. I hope I still have 10 minutes. Praise God. The tongue is for praising God and blessing people. And my tongue shall talk of your righteousness. Psalm 35, verse 28. We do this very well. Thank God for a wonderful choir. We have a wonderful choir. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. And my tongue shall talk of your righteousness and, right, and rightness and justice. And of my reasons for your praise. The key there is all day long. Praising God is not just 30 minutes on Sunday. It's all day long. Your tongue is for praising God. Is for magnifying the most high God. Matthew chapter 21 verse 16 says, And they said to him, Do you hear what they are saying? And Jesus replied to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouth of babes and unwinged infants you have provided and perfected praise? That's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking. Saying the importance of praise, hallelujah, on our lips. You need to praise God. You don't have to be in the choir to praise God. You need to praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15 says, Through him therefore, let us constantly and at all times offer up to God the sacrifice of praise. Let us constantly and at all times offer to God a sacrifice of praise. At times it's a sacrifice of praise. Things are tough. Things are demanding. We say, Lord, I praise you. I worship you and magnify your, name, your holy name. There's none like you. You are the creator of heaven and earth. I adore you. I worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. And his presence and his glory comes upon you. And he strengthens you to go through that situation. And the word of God says, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph in Christ always. One thing you are sure of is that you have victory. Hallelujah. Victory. As a believer, you have victory. Even when the ultimate in this life seemingly happens. You have victory. Death for the believer is promotion. Heaven is a better place, but you're not going now. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, I need, I need magnifying glass to see that. Hallelujah. Just bring a note to me. Let me see. Um, through him. Okay. 
Now, let me go to the next point. So we've said the tongue is powerful. We have said the tongue is a key to you to prosper. We have said the tongue is prophetic. We've said the tongue is... Um, Amen. Protection. And the tongue is for you to praise God. The next one, the tongue is to profess our faith. Profess our faith. Hallelujah. Let me go to 1 Timothy 6.12. I have to round up now speedily. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life to which you are summoned and for which you have confessed a good confession of faith before many witnesses. The fight of faith is with your tongue, is with your mouth. Hallelujah. That's how the lion anointing kicks in. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. So the tongue is for us to profess our faith. Hmm. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of that testimony. You have to profess your faith. You have to testify of the goodness of God. That is how we win in life. And that's what your tongue is for. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, finally, but not the least, praise God. I'm sure you're saying, thank God. The tongue is for praying. The tongue is for praying. Jeremiah 33.3. 3. Call upon me and I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know of. Hallelujah. When you call on him, he will reveal things to you. <laughs> Revelation chapter 11, no. Romans 11, 33 says, Oh, the depth of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable, unfathomable are his ways. God is all-knowing. He knows everything. He, he knows everything. Everything. Hallelujah. So pray. Talk to him. Oh, he will show you great things. He will speak to you. I, I like Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24. It says, you see, in your work with God, this begins to happen. Before they call, I will answer. Mm. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Oh, that's a wonderful place to be in God. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will, I will hear. So the tongue is for praying. Knowing your heart that at times before you even call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are here speaking, I will hear. I mean, that's wonderful. That's a powerful place to be in your work with God. And then, of course, Ephesians 6, verse 18. Let your prayer be known unto God. And Your tongue is for your protection. Your tongue is for praising 